The last five Psalms, Psalm 146 through Psalm 150, each begin the exact same way. Praise ye the Lord. As we enter the season of thanksgiving and praise, Scott is walking us through this crescendo of praise, a study he is calling the Hallelujah Chorus. In our busy lives, we must make time to praise the Lord, not only for what He's given us, but praise the Lord for who He is. And when our heart is filled with praise, we are ready for worship. Let's join Scott now for today's study. Do you have a praise list? And now I would say you probably somewhere have a prayer list. Maybe it's written, maybe it's in your mind. Uh, but I'm asking today, do you have a praise list? Do you have a list somewhere of things that you have written down purposely, intentionally, uh, to remind yourself of the goodness of God? Psalm 147 provides one for us. It's a divinely inspired one. Let's walk through it today. Uh, the psalmist is talking about praising the Lord and the witness that is to others. Uh, and we've discovered already that the object of our praise must be God. So we know it's all to the Lord. But today, observe the extent of our praise. What are we praising Him for? The short answer is everything, and there's quite a variety in this text, but let's walk through it. First, we praise God for His work. Listen to verse 2 and following. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together the outcast of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. Stop just a minute. That's what He did for Israel, but what has He done for you? Has the Lord saved you? forgiven you, given you hope? Has the Lord answered some prayer? Has the Lord met you in your need? Uh, Write that down on your hallelujah list today. Think about what he's done in your life. And by the way, think about what he's done in the lives of other people, not just in you. Think about the blessing of God for family and friends and, and rejoice. When you hear good things in other people's lives, stop and give God praise and glory. If you can't rejoice over the goodness of God in somebody else's life, and then something is wrong with your spirit, not just towards that person, but towards the Lord. Look at verse 6. The Lord lifteth up the meek. He casteth the wicked down to the ground. Let's praise God for what he does for others and what he's done for us. And then let's praise him for his work, not only that he's done in us and done for others, but praise him for the work that he's done in the past and what he's doing now. Listen to verse 13 and 14. For he hath strengthened the bars of thy gates. He hath blessed thy children within thee. He maketh peace in thy borders and filleth thee with the finest of the wheat. So he goes back, past tense, he's strengthened us, he's blessed us. Uh, But then present tense, he's making, he's filling. I love this. The God of the past is the God of the present. Uh, He says, I am the Lord, I change not. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, today. And forever. So the God who was, is, and the God who has, does. Praise God for his present tense work. Praise him for what he does in heaven and what he does on the earth. In fact, this is one of the fascinating things about Psalm 147. He goes back and forth between earth and heaven. It's like a split screen. Uh, That's the way the book of Revelation was written, too. Back and forth between heaven and earth. You've got to keep your eyes on both because God's at work on both ends. Uh, Listen to verse 4 and 5. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. Think about that. We can't even number the stars. He not only knows the number, he knows them by their names. He calls them by their names. Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. In verses 7 through 11, sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praise unto the harp, upon the harp unto our God, who covereth the heaven with clouds, who prepareth rain for the earth, who maketh grass to grow upon the mountains, He giveth to the beast his food, and to the young ravens which cry. He delighteth not in the strength of the horse. He taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him and those that hope in his mercy. And do you see how God who worked in the constellations is working right here on earth, in the nitty-gritty of life, in the everyday, in what you might think to be the mundane. Uh, He's blessing. He's working. That's powerful. Do you see God's work in nature? Now let it testify to you. Now look around you. Now get, your, get your head up out of your mobile device just for a few moments and look around you. Now look what God has done and what God has created. All of this should be a prayer prompter to us. Everything and everyone should be a reminder of the goodness of God. Now I can't 
just skim over this. He says in verse 10 that he doesn't delight in the strength of the horse or take pleasure in the legs of a man. In other words, God doesn't need your strength. You need his. The Lord's not impressed with what we can accomplish. We should be impressed with what he accomplishes. All the praise goes to God. And so we're praising him for what he does in others and what he does in us, what he's done in the past and what he's doing now, what he does in heaven, what he does on earth. But notice, please, in this psalm that the extent of the praise is not only for his work, it is also for his word. And I love this. I love this because he's connecting the work of God and the word of God. If you need calls for praise today, read the Bible. Just open the scriptures and just start reading. And I promise you, in a very short period of time, you'll begin to see things revealed in Scripture for which we should stop and praise God. See, your Bible is a praise book. That's what it is. And it should lead you to praise. I, I'm more and more convinced all the time that when we approach the Word of God like we ought to approach the Word of God, it always leads us to praise and to worship. So listen to some other verses. Verse 15, He sendeth forth His commandment upon earth. His Word runneth very swiftly. I love that thought. Uh, the Lord's word is on the move. The Lord's word is running swiftly. Uh, it's running to meet people where, where they are. Uh, his, his breath, his commandment reaching to every part of the earth. He giveth snow like wool. He scattereth the hoarfrost like ashes. He casteth forth his ice like morsels. Who can stand before his cold? Here it is, verse 18. He sendeth out his word and melteth them. He calls of his wind to blow and the waters flow. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Do you see the repetition of Jacob here? Uh, this weak man to whom the promise of God was given and the word is still being fulfilled. I've marked in my Bible in verse 15, the word is running. In verse 18, the word is being sent. In verse 19, the word is being shown. You see all the action connected to the word of God? I tell you, I love the work of the word of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good work. The word of God is at work in this world, and for that, we should give God praise and glory. In fact, in another great psalm, Psalm 119 uh, that's a psalm you should spend some time in. Longest of the psalms, 176 verses. All through that psalm, the word leads the psalmist to praise. He praises God. In fact, in one place, he says, seven times a day do I praise him for his wonderful word. I wonder how many times every day we praise God for his word and for his works. So let me challenge you today to do something. Uh, would you make your own hallelujah list? Uh, you may want to take this list as a good starting point in Psalm 147. It'll prime the pump for you. Open the Word if you don't know where to start and just let the Word help you get your list started. But make you a praise list today. And then, like the psalmist, write it down. Now, that's what the psalmist was doing. He was putting his praise to paper. He was pinning his praise. Why don't you do that today? Write it down because as you write it down, you'll think of more and more things. Uh, in the words of the, the hymn writer Johnson Oatman, count your many blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, See what God hath done. The extent of our praise should be to all of our life and for all of our days. Ask the Lord today to help you be more conscious of his goodness in your life and more deliberate and intentional about your praise. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. We here at Enjoying the Journey are thankful for you, our listeners. It is always such an encouragement for us to hear how God is using the ministry of Enjoying the Journey. All of the resources we provide are free, all because of the support of listeners just like you. While we believe your tithes should be given to your local church, we are always grateful to have Christians from around the country to partner with us as God leads. All gifts are tax deductible. You can visit our website, enjoyingthejourney.org, and click Donate in the upper right-hand corner. You can make a one-time investment or set up reoccurring gifts. However God leads you to partner with us, thank you, and we hope you'll join us next time 
on enjoying the journey.